Okay, welcome to lesson two of unit seven. This is on transforming the graph of a log, a logarithmic graph. If you notice, there is our HK format, and that's the only way, uh, other than your basic graphing a log, that I will have you really be transforming or graphing these other than on a calculator. It's just not reasonable to be doing a lot the other way. So, um, the first thing that we look at is the values of h and k. Go ahead and make a prediction right now what you think the movement will be for this one. Is that 3 and h or a k first off? Hopefully you said it's an h and now think what the h movement normally is. If you're saying that should go right 3, let's check it out. Let's make sure that it does. So this is g of x. So come down to g of x and I'll just write the values off to the side so you can see how we calculate this in our minds. If we plug in 3.5, we're saying log 2 of 3.5 minus 3 would be 1 half. So 2 to what power is 1 half? If you say negative 1, awesome. Remember, we always think of the, of the exponential, or I do, uh, equals 1 half or 2 to the negative 1. Okay, now 4 minus 3 would be 1, so log 2, 1. If you're saying the zeroth power of 2 equals 1, then you're correct. Okay, 5 minus 3 is 2, so I'd go log 2, 2. If you say 1, yay. Log 2, 7 minus 3 would be 4 log 2, 4 would be 2, log 2, 11 minus 3 is 8, and if you say that's 3, perfecto. Okay, now let's go over and graph it. We do see that 3.5, right about there, is it negative 1? 4 is at 0, 5 is at 1, 7 is at 2, 11 is at 3, and so if we just take the curve, we graph it, make sure to put g of x on that one, you can see that we have moved the asymptote right there. Okay, so this is our um, h movement. h equaled 3. So you were correct. We we're going to shift it over 3. That's what you were saying. Okay, now we're going to go with an h shift and a k shift. So let's think about what this would be. If you're saying, I'm sorry, I think I said left. Forgive me, remember. I go back and forth on my left and right. If you said right 3, you are correct. Um, so this would be a right 3. And if you're saying up 2, perfect. Perfect. So in other words, we could just go ahead and move these points up 2 in our guess here and see if that works out. Okay, we should land right on those points if that's right. Let's go over here and do the work and see if it happens. Now watch how I do this because it can get tricky if you're doing it just in sight. Log 2, 3.5 minus 3 would be a half. And we said log 2, 1 half, we did that a minute ago. We said it was negative 1. Now we add 2 to it, that's 1. Log 2, 4 minus 3, 1. We said that was 0. 0 plus 2 is 2 log 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, so that's equal to 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Log 2, 7 minus 3 is 4, so that's equal to 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Log 2, 11 minus 3 is 8. Log 2, base 2, 8 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So we come out here at 5. We should be 
um, I mean at, at 11 we should be at 5 right there at 7 we're at 4 1, 2, 3, 4, so we hit up on our point there. At 5 we should be at 1, right there. At 4 we should be at 2, and at 3.5 we should be at 1. So there we go. You did your shifting correctly. Okay, good job, and make sure and put H of X on that one. That way we have them clearly marked. Okay, how does the graph of g of x compare to f of x? It was transformed or translated 3 to the right. Uh, h of x is translated 3 to the right and up 2. Um, I need to mention something so that you make sure and notice in behavior on logarithms. They don't bring it up here, but I want to. Okay. In behavior, for f of x here, do you notice how for f of x, we have that as x goes towards 0, f of x goes to negative infinity. And as x goes towards infinity, f of x goes towards positive infinity. On g of x and h of x, because they have very similar, uh, well, the same uh, end behavior, what is it that their x is approaching? It's not 0. It is 3 or it's your h value. So as x approaches your h value, f of x will go to either, it could be positive or negative infinity depending upon the sign out front. So f of x goes to negative infinity in this case. Okay, And as x goes towards positive infinity, f of x goes towards positive infinity. Okay. Those will change up, you know, if we do a reflection or something. But remember this little key here. It says x approaches the h, that it does that. Okay, the third one there. In general, how do you think the graph f of x um, log b, log base b, x minus h plus k is translated to the parent graph? So I want you to make sure and get in there what your h shifts still do and what your k shifts still do, in your own words. H shifts go right and left and specify which one which way. And then your K shifts go up and down, specify which one which way. Okay. Now we have graph that f of x equals log one half x is shown. Okay, so here it is. Graph log two. Okay, what do, what would this value normally do? We're changing the A value now. So start to think, okay, how's that gonna look? Well, let's just plug them in and see. So g of x is what we're going to work on first with the 2 out front. So we plug 1 in there. 1 half log 1 half 1. What's any, any, um, any base to what power equals 1? You said anything to the 0th power equals 1. You're good. And we're going to go ahead and put it in for h of x so we don't have to try to word that one again. Okay, now log 1 half. Oh, and I forgot we're multiplying it by 2. Whew. Log 1 half 2. So what power would 1 half be? If you say negative 1, you're correct because that would flip it back to the top. Now negative 1 times 2 would be negative 2. So this is g of x here that we're doing. Okay, now 2 times log 1 half 4. Well, 2 to flip back up to be 4 would be a negative, and then 2 times 2 is 4, so it's a negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And now 2 log 1 half 8. 1 half to, 
is to the negative third power to become 8. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Okay. So at 1, we're at 0 again. At 2, we're at negative 2. At 4, we're at negative 4. And at 8, we're at negative 6. Now you notice we do put really nice numbers in here. We always have to put a power of whatever the base is in order to get these to be so nice. Okay, so this is g of x. And we already said this is the parent function, 1 half x. So, what do you notice? If you were thinking that that was going to be a vertical stretch, you forgot that it's the inverse. If we have an inverse of a vertical stretch, it's a horizontal stretch. A horizontal. Let me make sure which way I'm going on this. That is a vertical stretch. It will become a horizontal. Let's go down and answer the questions. For a is greater than zero. How do you think the value of A affects the graph? Let me make sure that we've got these right. You can see well, how come I'm struggling right here. Because it's uh, just flipping in my brain. So, um, yeah, if it's greater than 1, okay, good. It's looking like a shrink here because you're looking at the distance. So for example, here it's closer than it was here. So if your A value is greater than zero, such as that two, then it's going to be a horizontal shrink. And here is why, is because it came from the inverse, which was a, which was a vertical shrink. When it looks like a stretch, it was a shrink originally. Whew, that was hard to get to. Uh, come and see me if you've forgotten that one from that last unit. Okay, so um, so then on the um, next one, what we do, oh, I don't know why they went with the negative. That'll flip it across the axis, won't it? But now they're going to do the one half. Well, now now we know that this is with it less than one, greater than zero. So we might go ahead and guess that's going to be a horizontal. Hopefully, you said stretch because we know that that the one is our cutoff between the two. And remember, if it looks like a shrink here, it came from the stretch. So here we go. Uh, negative one half times our log of one half. So log one half x, one half uh, two, that would be log one half two. If you're saying this has to be a negative one, negative one times negative one half will be a positive half. Log half four. If you're saying that's a negative 2, negative 2 times negative half is 1. Log half 8. If you're saying that would be a negative 3, negative 3 times a negative 1 half would be a positive 3 halves. So here we go. Zero, zero, 1, 0 again, not 0, 0. And now we go to right there would be two, uh, two one half, four one. See, we're using that as our x, that as our y. 
eight, one and a half. Go ahead and bring our end behavior down, how we know it's going to go. And now do you see how we stretch the distance? Um, if we were to look across here at, um, actually at four, it's not too bad. What we've done is we've actually shrunk the distance here. That would be the easiest way to see it. Um, and in shrinking it to the X, we've stretched it from the Y. Okay, that would be the easier way to see it on that side. This side, we could see it clearly the other way. How does the value of A affect the graph? A log BX when A is less than zero. That's when it caused the reflection over the x-axis. So that's why you'd want that. That's why it made it a little bit harder to see our stretch here, our horizontal stretch, because we put it on the other side. In class, we can do it on the same side, or you could right now, without that negative and be able to see it. Okay, to see the graph A log base B X always has what point in common with the graph of log B X and Y? Well, it should be that common point that we're seeing, 1, 0, because any number to the 0th power equals 1. So any log of 1 is 0. Okay. Without graphing, explain how the graph 0.25 log 1 half x plus 6 would compare with this. Okay. Well, hopefully you say that should shift left 6. Now when we shift left 6, remember what that does to our asymptote. It would go over to 6, and our end behavior would be, as x approaches 6, f of x approaches negative infinity. Okay? Uh, draw it if you need to. Uh, intercepts. You notice with the, with the h shift, the intercept was just one away from there. So the intercept of the x-axis will be at 7 on this one because it's 1 from your 6. Kind of like we did the exponentials. And um, we should have 0 0.25, that it would be a horizontal stretch, okay? Because it's between 0 and 1, okay? Ask specific questions in class. If I lose you on any of this, just come in ready to go with your questions. Now this one, we're going to write the equation from the graph here. So the first thing that they have us look at is they say, okay, the vertical asymptote for this graph g of x ends up moving from this 0, 0 down to negative 2. So we have negative 2 as our asymptote. The vertical asymptote of the parent function is x equals 0. That's this one. This means that f of x has been translated two units to the left, so h is negative 2. Okay, so you could go ahead and come down here to this and say, okay, this is going to be log 1 fourth because that's our parent function is that base. Um, X, and we know our horizontal already, is negative 2. And I know you said, well, you just put in a plus 2, but remember, there's already a negative in our formula, so it would be negative, negative 2. That makes positive. Okay. Now, find the sine of A. Well, do you notice how we flipped across going the other direction? So we know that the sine is negative. So the sine is negative. Okay. In C, it says, okay, let's find the K value. Now, this can be just a little bit tricky. I just want to slowly go through it. Consider the point 4, 1 on the graph of f of x. So that's our original uh, parent function. We go to 4, 1. Now, if we follow the steps of our translations, we can figure out what our k-shift is. So the horizontal translation, we went down um, to the left 2, so we'd go to the left 2, we get 2, 1. 
Now, if we do the reflection from the A across, we are at 1. And now comes in our K-shift. If we're at 1, we could go ahead and say, the final transformation, we have to go down one unit from that 2, 1 to hit our graph. So K is negative 1. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Go back and listen to the tape again if it did not. All you do is find a reference point on your parent graph and move it to that point on your, on your other graph. Okay? How can you use the x-intercept of the graph of g of x to check that you wrote a correct equation? Well, the x-intercept is right here at 2. Yeah, at 2. So we have 2 as our x value. So we could plug it in to the original equation and make sure that we get 0. Okay, let's plug it in. Negative log, and you should be writing this, negative log 1 fourth, parenthesis 2, plus 2, parenthesis closed, minus 1. So we'd have negative log 1 fourth, 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 1. Negative log 1 fourth of 4 that would simply be 1. That would be a 1 right there. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay? That's how we get that. Perfect. Okay. Given the graph, of the function a, b, x minus h plus k, which parameter a, h, or k is determined by the location of the graph's asymptote? Which one is it that we look at the asymptote and we know that that's the value? If you're saying h, you're correct. Given the graph of a function g of x equals a log b, x minus h plus k, which parameter, A, H, or K, is determined by the location of the graph's asymptote? Okay, so... The graph of F of X would be the graph of of fx, or the graph of j of x, would be the graph of f of x with um, just a minute, I'm just trying to make sure that we've got it okay, so here's here's how they say this I really like you guys though. I want you to mention the H first because the H is the most ob obvious. So the H is the graph that is determined by the location of the graph's asymptote. Okay? Um, And the K is simply affected by the vertical translations. How much you're going to slide it up and down, just like you saw up here at the top. So it's really the H that they're asking about uh, being... Um, boy, I don't like how they wrote that necessarily. That is a little bit challenging there. But it's the H that controls where the placement of that asymptote goes. That's bottom line what they're wanting you to think about. We've already kind of looked at that. Also be aware of the in behavior there. When you come to class, we'll do this practice. You can look over it if you want. Come in with specific questions for the warm-up. Thank you very much.